about there. So it does squat about two and a half inches. We're not on our overloads yet, but uh, you know, we get kind of close. Definitely levels the truck out a bit. So I can tell you that the mileage on this uh, 6 7 high output is acceptable. It's nothing uh, special, but in my opinion, it works. So I tracked all of our miles on the way to Yellowstone and back, towing my Cardinal, which is a 34 foot uh, fifth wheel trailer. Weighs about 13,000 pounds as I have it set up. I know that because I've hit the scales with it. And. Um, with the three, 331 gears, single rear wheel, on average, I got 11.5 miles per gallon towing, okay? But there's a caveat to that. It wasn't 11.5. It was really about 10.5. And the difference is in hand calculating the mileage versus going off what the truck tells you you're getting. So this is showing 13 right now. It's consistently off by, I would say, one mile per gallon to 1.1 miles per gallon. It's always generous. So you never get what it tells you, uh, at least in my experience hand calculating. You know, this says 12.2 there for the last 285 miles of the journey. That's more like 11.2 uh, coming back from Winnemucca, Nevada is that part of it. So. It is what it is, um, but if you're going off of what the truck is telling you up here, you're probably being lied to a little bit. And in my opinion, it's a bit generous um, compared to hand calculating it out. So that's that. Um, the DEF consumption, some people complain about it. Um, it is what it is, right? If you're buying a post emissions truck, anything after 0708, I believe is when they all started putting in uh, DEF minus the Cummins. Uh, but any uh, all, all these modern diesels, right? You got to put in blue DEF. And in my experience, I'm consuming about one gallon per 700 miles, 600 miles when towing. Um, I haven't really calculated it when I'm not towing, but that's just been my experience when I am towing and what I get. So it's a pain in the butt. I hate blue def, but if you want a diesel, you got to pay to play. And unless you're getting an older truck that's almost 20 years old now, it is what it is, guys. So you can be upset with it all you want, but in my opinion, the consumption is what it is. You know, maybe there's ways to do it better, uh, run it hotter, you know, run, run your truck harder. I've heard is good for it. Um, so towing and doing things like that, you don't want to take it too easy on these. The trucks that last the longest are the ones doing hot shot, the ones towing RVs all, all the time. They're not doing these little trips. So these trucks just don't like that. We're gonna go put this in storage here, but uh, yeah, that's just my experience from reading the forums. As far as additives go, oh, well, I guess, while we're still on the topic of mileage, cruising around town, so my trip to work is like 15 miles, about three miles, four miles on the highway, or I should say three, four miles in the city, just kind of getting on the highway through the suburbs, and then about 10, 11 miles on the highway. 
So that trip I do five days a week in this truck now. And on average, I'm getting 17 and a half hand calculated or 18 and a half if you're using the trip on the computer. That's miles per gallon, okay? Um, I don't know, to me that's acceptable. You know, I'm not hot riding around by any means, but this does have the 10 speed of course. And like I said, this has 331 gears. So it should be fairly efficient. And I would say that it is. Now, the, the other things that I, I like about the truck, the uh, engine brake, a lot of the Ram guys like to say, oh, the Ford engine brake sucks. In my opinion, it does just fine with 13,000 pounds. Now I'm not towing 20,000 pounds or anything crazy like that, but I went down 10% grades in the Tetons. I barely, barely used my service brakes. So between running just uh, the transmission and this, uh, that took care of almost all of my braking. I'd say 95% of it, it kept me at about 40, 35, 40 miles an hour through the 10% grades. And then anything less than that, six, seven, eight, nine percent grades, absolutely no problem at all. So as far as the, the engine brake goes on this, I am uh, totally happy with that. While we're here, I'll show you what the camera system looks like for those of you who get the 360 camera. So of course there's your front camera. You got your kind of all around view there. It's got the little lines on it. And then you can toggle here between like the bed, which you can zoom in here. Uh, you can go, you know, tailgate, your actual hitch, bumper hitch, side cameras, Actually, I've never even used this one. Oh, okay, if you have one on your trailer, I guess. Uh, so that's what that looks like. Now, my one qualm with this camera system is that for me, when I'm hooking up my fifth wheel, this is the one I want. But guess what? Every time I put it in reverse, it goes right to the bumper, okay? Because it thinks, oh, you're backing up, you know, and you want to see what's behind you. Yes, but I always want to see this. So every time I hit reverse or park, and toggle back and forth between them, I have to choose this and select this camera. Because if I go back into park, okay, back into reverse, it doesn't know that that's the camera view that I want all the time. Um, so I wish if, you, if it had a seven pin connection here, like it's smart enough to know that it has that, I wish it would stay on this camera view. If there's a setting to keep it that way, please let me know in the comments because I'm not aware of it. So enough about the camera system. Overall, the cab is what it is. Guys, this is the XL, comes standard in 2023 with this screen. I think it's a five or six inch screen. It works perfectly fine when it works and the connection is good. Um, you know, like I said, it wigs out sometimes and randomly doesn't connect or won't reconnect, which is annoying even if you're tethered in with a good cord. I've tried all the firmware updates, all the Apple updates, nothing seems to change that, but is where it is as you can see got 20,482 miles on the truck right now no engine issues no brake issues uh, tires are wearing good as of right now while we're on the subject of tires the XL off-road pack does come with these Goodyear Wranglers and you can see they are still holding up pretty good I've rotated them I think once or twice now I think actually just once um, those are the drive tires Rear tires also look really good. Okay, at least 50% in my opinion left on those. So that's the truck. Um, do I like it? Yeah, I love the long bed. Turning radius absolutely sucks. The 48 gallon tank and the uh, length is awesome here. I can have my toolbox and my headache rack and plenty of room for the fifth wheel and other stuff, more storage in there. So I like that. The uh, cab, spacious. You know, I got my car seat and there's still room to recline or go back and, you know, I love the vinyl. That's nice to clean out. I just washed it today because there was Cheerios everywhere and uh, dog hair and stuff. So it's easy to clean that. So, um, I hate the door ding. I mean, every time you open the driver's door, it dings. I wish I could turn that off because when my son is napping back there, I don't want the ding going off. It's just unnecessary, you know, the door's open, but that's just a stupid Ford thing. All right, now, um, let's talk about, is this enough truck? 
It certainly is. I mean, this is rated to tow 22,000 to 30,000 pounds, depending on how you're towing it, you know, whether it's gooseneck or uh, fifth wheel or 22,000 is off the, the rear bumper for this exact spec in my, you know, research. Is it enough? Yeah, it's enough. It's got tons of power. The brakes are plenty good. I've never had any issues with that. So the only issue that I would have towing this trailer is in wind and that is where you might want a dually, okay? I didn't go with a dually because I knew I might be daily driving this truck one day, which I am now, and I'm glad 90% of the time, or 95% of the time, I should really say, that I don't have a dually, because it'd be much harder to park. And this truck's already about 25 feet long. It is hard to park. Okay, but if I had a dually that'd stick out, you know the drill, okay? The times I want a dually is when you're driving in wind, you're on 80, you're on one of these highways in the Midwest. We're going through Wyoming. It's windy. This trailer's 13 feet tall. It's a full-size, you know, fifth wheel. It's not, it's not huge. It's only 34 feet long, but gosh, if this was any bigger, it'd be even more of a wind sail. And that is where I'd really want the stability of a dually. So if I had any, any bigger of a trailer, I would want a dually. There was a couple times on this last trip coming through Nevada that it was windy and it was raining. And I pulled off the highway for about a minute while the wind died down because I just didn't like it. It was a little bit squirrely and the roads were super wet. So I didn't want to be in that. If I had a dually, I'd probably have more confidence and just kept going. But it is what it is. You just gotta be safe. Um, so if you're towing an even bigger trailer, longer, taller, whatever, I would get the dually if you're towing quite a bit. Now, if you're towing it 5% of the time, maybe 10%, you're a weekend warrior, you know, you could totally get away with a single rear wheel. There's just gonna be certain instances, in my opinion, that the dually would give you that much more confidence, that much more grip and more traction and a little bit more capability, you know, than a single rear wheel setup. That being said, it's gonna be a lot harder to park. You know, you're gonna have to get a higher gear ratio. Um, and, you're gonna have six set of tires to replace on the truck instead of four. It is what it is. So in my opinion, that's why I'm gonna say this truck is all about trade-offs. You know, it doesn't do anything perfectly, but it does exactly what I want it to do pretty darn well. Uh, it could be easier to park, but then it'd probably be shorter. You know, it, it could be uh, more stable, but then it'd probably be wider in a dually, right? It could be more efficient, but then it probably wouldn't be as powerful or as capable. So, you know, you, you kind of, you, you choose your battles and you can configure these trucks with just about anything with the gas, short bed, long bed, crew cab, no crew cab, right? So choose the truck that's right for you. As far as the 6.7 goes, it's been flawless. Um, I've had no issues whatsoever. And these trucks are, are known to run really well and last a long time if you take care of them. I've been doing my oil change intervals every 5,000 miles. That's just what I'm comfortable with. Some people push it and go further. That's fine. That's up to you. But for me, um, I want to take care of this truck and this engine. And so I keep the oil nice and clean. And then I also use an additive. I use the um, Arch Oil 6500 every single tank. And I noticed that that gives me 5 to 10% better fuel mileage like they claim. Yes, it does. And it just seems like the truck runs a little smoother and a little quieter. If that keeps it happy, then the cost is kind of a wash, you know. And so maybe it's doing some benefit. Um, but the cost, in my opinion, is a wash with the a little bit of extra efficiency you get. Not to mention you might be doing some, <clears throat> you know, saving your, yourself some maintenance down the road. Who knows? So that's my 20,000 mile review of the truck. I do really like it. It's been good to me. Um, the little electronics in this truck are kind of annoying, you know, but that's just kind of a Ford thing. They're not great. The dash has always squeaked. And so I put this little parking pass in here and every so often I have to adjust it because it keeps squeaking on the highway. The clips just aren't real good that they used, I guess. Uh, but yeah, uh, this is the bench seat. So you can carry six people in this truck. This folds up and then you do have storage down here.
which is pretty nice. Um, and we used it. We actually had somebody sitting in the middle here all throughout Yellowstone. So they'd have a better view out the front window. And we had somebody in the back here and my son there. So we had five, but um, having the front bench seat was kind of handy because they got a better view of all the wildlife and stuff. Rather than being stuck in the middle, you can't see as much back there. Um, that's about all I know. That's really all that's worth mentioning, in my opinion, on this truck. Um, I'd give it, I guess, about a 9 out of 10. You know, like I say, no truck's perfect. Uh, but this has been pretty good to me, so I'll probably hold on to it for a little while anyways. I do like to switch things out, but my wife wants me to keep this, and she's usually the reasonable one, pragmatic one. So I usually try to listen to her and uh, not be not be jumping over to different vehicles all the time because I do it enough as it is, but... That's about all I got for you.